Hmm. One. Oh, shit. This damn camera's not working. It's all messed up again. But listen, I didn't want to touch this story for various reasons. Because as a, you know, regular individual, just one of the regular guys, I think that whenever a black person says something, it'll be misconstrued. And I'm not going to tell you how it will be misconstrued. Because you know how I do my videos. I go into the spill about how fucked up cops are. And how bad life is. And da 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 da. People have been raised crazy. Da 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 da. And then I'd go into saying that nobody deserves to die. Not even a dirty cop. Remember where a few months ago. Where a so called dirty cop had been shot. And I stood up for the cop and you told me dude you're wrong this cop was a prick people fail to realize situations like that i don't know too many times where me and you have argued over any situation or subject we've always been able to sit down and talk and figure out the middle ground you know with j log or j god or whatever uh, me and him had some typings a while back a long time ago he had commented on something I said about Hispanic people. And the thing is, he was mad at me because apparently I was siding with the Mexicans. Damn, you guys, I really do need to do something with my hat. So, um, I want to get back on subject. And the subject is, um, the police, the drama, racism, hate comments, fucked up emails, and people totally not respecting or understanding other people. People tend to want to believe you're a racist, one, because some of your commentary is slatedly and is dry. What I mean by slated is, it's the delivery. I know you, me and you have talked on the phone, and the difference between your videos and you on the phone is that when me and you talk, it's explained, it's it's a feeling. You know, you know, I don't understand what this guy is saying. But when I watch your video, sometimes you just, I don't know, you, you come off harsh. And I'm not going to tell you to get smooth on nobody. You do it the way you do it. And that's the way you do it. And that's what puts you where you at. And, you know, I appreciate that for that. You look at the situation here. This guy flips and pops these cops flips and pops cops you look at the situation and you yourself said maybe he grew up and he had some bad influence or experiences with cops you know I look at it like this the hell yeah ducks flying by I look at it like this when it comes to my experience with the police growing up I think there was Two, maybe three positive, it's extremely positive, two or three positive instances I've had with the police. I mean, positive moments with the police. Um, that's about it. And those moments are moments I initiated. Sometimes, like you mentioned the guy in Oakland, apparently he had done a crime or what have you, and he wasn't going back to jail. You failed to mention the other shootings in Washington, um, you know, where the guy knocked on the door. You know, the cop knocks on the door and talks to the, the guy's mother, and then the guy comes and blows four cops away there. Um, and in Oakland, I think one of those cops was Italian. It doesn't matter. See, the video I was going to do before this, I had a bunch of video camera problems. And when I do my videos, I'm live, I'm spontaneous, it comes out the head, no scripts, no dialogue, no brainer. So if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I'm not sitting down there trying to figure out how to be wrong. So it's just going to come out wrong or right. So when I look at police officers getting shot, I look at a history of drama between peace, people and the police. There's supposed to be peace officers, and which peace? Who's peace? The peace for who? Um, a lot of cops have attitudes to where, as you know, I'm right and you're wrong, and a lot of times they're wrong. Um, you could have a couple of drinks, Charlie, and, and be coming out of a bar, 
and they assuming because you're bigger than the guy you're standing next to that you're the drunken person that's causing a problem. And then they overexert their power and their will. Sometimes having authority is a problem. Sometimes having power is a problem. Sometimes being empowered over people who need judgment, not action. And sometimes it's basic common sense judgment, just like the guy getting snatched off the bar. You know, of course somebody's gonna throw you into a wall or something. You put your hands up. But for the idiots who watch the video, they say he slammed his hand through the glass window. Why would you do that? I mean, even a drunk person does dumb things. But drunks aren't stupid. Um, now, this guy had problems. But his problems shouldn't be the problems of society. The problems we have are based on a group of people being locked up as children. Not just black If you are in a certain socioeconomic state, you're most likely to be pulled over. And like I've been saying in my videos recently, that across the country, we live in pockets. Let's see, look, I wish I did have something here to show you guys. I wish I did have a big map here so I can show you the country. But enough. This is the country, it is blank. There's nothing here in America. Not one good damn thing. We're a land of a bunch of individuals who don't think collectively for the greater good. We think for now because we've been trained and taught that way. And when cornered, you do fantastic shit to save yourself. Look at the Fort Hood situation where that courageous black guy stood there while he was getting shot at and his partner was shot and he still took down the guy for no credit of his own but you look at situations where people put spin and race on things that's the only way we can communicate we don't think we can break the ice without saying something about a color or a race it's because we've been taught to be divided divided as a people we will always be conquered white, black, Mexican, or what have you. And what greater division but to put the caretakers of the people from the people in front line and put them in a situation to where they look bad. Those three cops, they might have been good cops, they might have been bad cops, we don't know. You can't tell me that these people wasn't working. If you're all in your squad cars with your clothes on, your uniforms on, at the coffee shop or what have you, before your shift, you can say that shit a million times. I've seen police officers sleeping in their cars on the side of the road. When you have sadistic, sick people walking through society, regardless of what color they are, an opportunist will take an opportunity. If you believe your life is over and you are going to die, what better way to commit suicide than suicide by cop? There's a whole bunch of things that we need to look at before we just say, this black man, this black beast, this savager. You didn't say it, but I've seen it. So it's the way we interpret each other. Of course, if throughout my lifetime, if all I saw was young white people being arrested every day, then all of a sudden, 40 years later, in my later stages, to see white people running them up, blowing people up like they did in Washington, just like the black kid in Oakland, just like that white guy that shot that cop earlier this year we spoke about. It's not about color. It's about oppression. And for the first time in history, white people are oppressed just as much as black people because of the financial divide. You're going to start seeing more crimes committed by white people. But my fear is that these crimes committed by white people will be directed and pointed at one group of people. Those who can understand and those who give a damn about others other than themselves. And this is part one because you had a part two video. So this is part one. I guess I got to find your part two.